Whiskey Cast. Brought to you by Redbreast. The definitive single pot still Irish whiskey. Those in the know, know Redbreast. Consider for a moment the humble whiskey glass. We trust it to caress our dram gently, yet we malign it so easily. Manuela, the glass you've got, that Manuela's got, is, in the words of Scotland, a total load of shite. Do you understand? It is tremor. They come in all shapes and sizes, but they all start out the same way. A furnace at 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna go in there, dip it. 300 degrees hotter than the temperature needed to melt iron or so cremate a human body. So when I stop turning, it just falls. That temperature just gives the molten glass the texture of warm honey. Just keep walking, you can walk a little bit faster. I don't want to hit anybody. <laughs> Normally, it's not considered a good idea to let a bunch of whiskey riders in the same room with anything that hot, let alone walk around with the stuff on the end of a stainless steel pole. But Akintosh and arranged for a group of New York area whiskey riders and bloggers to visit Brooklyn's Urban Glass to try and make our own whiskey glasses as part of the Art of Akintoshin project. Fortunately, there was professional help on hand from Urban Glass's own team of artists. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Danielle Brensinger intended to study painting at Philadelphia's Tyler School of Art. Six years ago, she discovered glass blowing and never looked back. The tools are pretty much all the same that we use today as they were using hundreds of years ago. The only difference is our furnaces are a little bit more efficient. The goal, to make a simple rocks glass and not a glass rock. The reality, anything but simple. The glass must be kept rotating so that it doesn't collapse. A puff of air creates the bubble inside what's called the gather. And the artists, or in our case, the artist and the amateur, shape it carefully, returning every couple of minutes to a smaller furnace called the glory hole to reheat the cooling glass and keep it pliable. Eventually, the glass begins to look like a real whiskey glass. You'll never look at a rocks glass the same way again, will you? <laughs> Let alone a Glencairn glass. I don't know how they, they manage that with the thick vase and the beautiful tulip shape. The artists at Urban Glass do produce hand-blown bourbon glasses, but not on the same scale as commercial glass makers. Most of the glasses that you see in everyday use are all mold blown into factories, so you do have people that are making them but they're all blown into a mold and then quickly extruded. So it'll be rapid fire and you can make a couple hundred in a day versus 50 in a day. In the end, everyone was able to make a rocks glass with no glass rocks and best of all, no burns. Now this is just a quick introduction to how whiskey glasses are made. But after making one, I'll never look at them in quite the same way again. For more cask strength conversation on whiskeys with the people who make them and the people who drink them, join us each week for Whiskey Cast. In New York City, I'm Mark Gillespie.